in my spirit, but I didn't tell Pastor Campbell because you know I don't want him to get nervous when I say I want to sing a song. But you know what? I'm so thankful that I can come before God's people and just minister and bring the word of God forth. And, and the song that was in my spirit is, my God is a good God. You know, he's such a good God. And he's such an awesome God. And like Pastor said earlier, sometimes we just take it for granted. You know, just like we put our key in our car, we know it's going to start. We, you know, you take it for granted that that's going to happen. But what if one day we woke up and, it, and, and life wasn't as pleasant as it was the day before? What would we do then? So God is letting us know he's always with us. Man may let you down every time, but he's always with us. So I just want to say, my God is a good God. My God is an awesome God. He is truly a God of his word. And if we didn't have him, we would fail each and every day. So I'm just thankful that God is so true and so just. And that uh, pastor asked me to bring forth the word of God today. And what he didn't tell you is when I gave him the scripture, he's in the middle of his football game. So he totally, forget, for, you know, totally forgot what I was even saying about the word on today. But I said, we can tag team. And the scripture is coming from this chapter. He totally forgot. He was all into the game. The Buckeyes were winning, so he was, he was just not even paying me any attention, so I should know better than to talk to him while the game is on. So, you know, I'm just thankful that the pastor uh, is blessed and he's blessing others, and that he had the time to um, go, God, go to God and say, hey, God, what do you have for us this Sunday? And God told him to, you know, bring me forth with the word of, uh, that God has placed in my spirit. So God is such a God that he loves us so much that he takes the time to speak to his man servant and his woman servant so we can bring forth the word of God so that you can be blessed and that you can align yourself with the blessing. Sometimes people aren't in line that they can even receive the blessing, but when you're in line to receive Receive it. It's so awesome to just hold up your basket and just catch the overflow. Catch the overflow when God is continuously blessing you and that you continuously can receive it without wondering if it's ever going to run out. When God's blessings are coming, it's just an overflow. And you just wake up in the next day and say, what next, God? What next, God? Because you know what you're doing. You know you're doing the will of the Father. So when you're doing the will of the Father, you don't have to wonder or worry if a new day is going to come, that it's going to be a prosperous day or a blessed day or a, a peaceful day. You already know because you're that man and woman of God continuously seeking his face and doing his will his way. Amen? Amen. Amen. I thank God that he always comes to see about us here at Top of the Mountain Christian Ministries. And if you would please turn with me to Hosea 4 and 6. And please stand with me. And when you get it, just say amen. Mm -hmm. Hosea 4 and 6. When God placed this in my spirit, I was trying to figure out, you know, what, what, what it, where was God going? What, what is it he wanted was to say to his people on today? And when he gave me the revelation of it all, I said, wow, God, you're serious. God, you, you're, you're right on point because it's just been in my spirit that uh, many people don't understand what it is God is doing here on this earth at this time. Because so many things are going on in the world and we focus on things on, on social media, things that are on the news, CNN news. When I'm in my break room at work, the news is on continuously. If you focus just on that, you would think the world is coming to an end tomorrow. But if you focus on the word of God, you know that God is in control of it all and that God knows the beginning and the ending so that, that you should know that you can rely on him and not wonder what tomorrow is going to bring, because he's the author and the finisher of your faith. Amen? Amen. And in Hosea 4 and 6, it says, My people are destroyed from lack of knowledge, because thou hast received knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's back up just a little bit more. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge, because what? For thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou, shalt, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Now he's already saying, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. You may be seated. 
And when I stop right there and start all over again, many people think God's talking about everybody else. No, he's talking about the body of believers. He's saying my people. He's saying my people. We're his people. We're destroyed from the lack of knowledge. Why? Because the lack of knowledge is being presented to us. However, we don't want to receive it. The, uh, the cause of man's uh, problem of lack of knowledge is, is out there. It stems from a short of, it's not stemming from a short of information, but rather from the rejection of information. We reject the information that God has for us. We reject the information that God is pouring out to his people. We reject it. So the lack of knowledge comes forth only because you don't want to receive it, only because you don't want to embrace it. Knowledge is there. Wisdom is there. But we have to want to embrace it. So in Hosea 4 and 6, my people said, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. You're destroyed for the lack of, lack of knowledge because you don't want to hold on to it. Once you get it, you, you just throw it to the side and think it doesn't pertain to you. Or you want to do it your way. Or you want to do it man's way. Or you want to do it the way social media is doing it. Look, don't let man control what you're doing in your life. Let the word of God guide you and lead you. Now listen, God won't put more on you than you can bear, said Job. God knows the beginning and the ending of your life. So if God has placed things in your life, maybe it's something you need to hurdle over. Or if it's something you need to get to, God knows what the ending is going to be. You just stay focused on the word of God. You understand that God's word is true and just and it won't fail you. See, when we try to do this thing ourselves, we fail every time. I want you to understand that God's word is the one that's going to guide you through it all. Amen? Amen. Since we know that the information is there in the word. We need to grasp hold to it. We need to hold on to it tight. You know, like when you hold on to your babies when they're newborn, you want to hold on to them because you know they rely on you. Well, you need to rely on God just like a baby relies on you as an adult. Hold on to him real tight. Don't let him go. Get everything that you need from the word of God. Because when you hold on tight to the word of God, God is going to guide you and lead you. And when things come up against you, you'll know that, hey, I'm going to be able to make it through this thing. Hey, it's not too hard for me. People go through different tragic um, situations in their lives. When we went to um, visit our nephew in uh, Atlanta and we were at uh, St. Jude Hospital, if we just understand how blessed we are, you're not in a hospital today. You're not sick in bed today. You're able to walk, talk, and have activities of your limbs. You need to understand you got to go forth and do what it is God has called you to do. We have many gifts and talents. And the title uh, of my message today, if I could give God's word a title, it says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Not that it's not ready available for you. It's just because we don't hold on to it and we don't apply it to our lives. We got to hold on to this knowledge that God has given us and God has blessed us with. Hold on to it. Why? Because there's a new day and a new season coming each and every time we wake up every morning. When we put our two feet on the floor, God is uh, uh, um, asking us, asking us, not making us, but asking us, what is it? What is it that it is that you need? Come unto me, all you that are heavy laden, come unto me, and I'll give you rest. Amen? Do you need rest on today? Do you need God to do something awesome for you on today? Do you need him to heal you today? Amen? Thank you, Lord God. And if you would turn with me today to Matthew 25 and 14, and we're going to talk about the parable of the talent. And I like talking about talents because so many of us in the body of Christ have so many talents. Amen. Not just one, not just two, not just three, but many talents. And we hold on to these talents and don't want to share our talents with other people. Why? Because what if for whatever reason, we don't feel like it. For whatever reason, it's just not timely enough for us. For whatever reason, we just don't want to go forth with our gifts and our talents. And we don't want to share with anybody else. But we got to share these talents. There's somebody out there that's needing that gift that you have. Why? Because people are perishing every day for lack of knowledge. From the very beginning, I've been talking about the lack of knowledge, lack of wisdom. We need this from the body of Christ because if we don't have it, we perish. And God wants us to go forth and help each other out. Because if we don't help each other out, there are many people that are going to perish. And not just the adults, their children and their children's children. So we need to go forth and know how valuable this gift that God has blessed us with. Many gifts, many talents. So if you go with me to Matthew 25 and 14, amen, when you have had... 
the chance to turn there, please say amen. Amen. The parable of the talents. Now, the parable of the talents is from 14 to 46. And when I continuously read about the talents, I'm just blessed in my spirit because talents mean this is a gift from God. This is not just something that you just picked up off the street or you just read um, from uh, social media. You just read from a book that was lying around. This is from the word of God. And God said he's blessed you with these gifts and talents. Now go forth, daughter. Go forth, son. And what are you going to do with these gifts and talents? I used an example uh, a couple weeks ago of um, cooking good food. And I've got all these cookbooks at my house. And it doesn't matter how many times I tell you how good of a cook I am. If I never cook the uh, recipe and share it with you, it's only in my household. William and I and maybe my kids or grandkids or whoever comes over to eat my food, nobody would know how good of a cook I am. I make a great cream cheese pound cake. But if I never share this cream cheese pound cake with you, you just think I'm uh, full of hot air. I'm just talking. But if I share this delicious pound cake with you, you say, hey, yeah, she can cook a pretty good pound cake. So I'm sharing this gift with you. I didn't have to, but I want you to be partaker of this delicious gift that I have. So the same thing with the word of God. You got this gift. You got this talent. Share with somebody. People need deliverance out there. People need prayer. People need love. If you don't have anything else, if you don't know anything about the gift that you have that God has given you, share the love. Share a smile. Share a hug. Amen. Share a bless you. Share the love that God has placed within you. See, when you become a new creature in Christ, everything about you should glow. That means that smile that you have, that means that hug that you give, everything about you should just overflow. When you see somebody and you see them in need of something, you should just want to be that person that just want to give, give, give. Maybe you don't have the gift financially, but you got that love to give. You got that patience to give, and Lord knows we need patience plenty of time. So whatever gift you have, I want you to share it. And if you're not sure of the gift, I want you to go to this word of God, and I want you to begin to read it and, and, and um, digest it. And once it's in you, don't just let it just sit there and marinate. I want you to let it overflow now, like rivers of water coming up out of you so that people will be delivered and set free by just the word that's coming out your mouth, by just the hug that you've given, by the, the kiss that you've given. Just share the love. Share the love. Amen? I'm going to start at 14. It says, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling to a far country, who have called his own servants and delivered unto them in goods. Amen. In 15 it says, And unto one he gave five talents, and unto another he gave two, and unto another he gave one. To every man according to his several ability, and the straightway took his journey. In 16, Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. And in 17, and likewise, he that had received two talents, he also gained other two. And in 18, but he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. We're going to stop right there. We're talking about talents. We're talking about five, two, and one. All three of them got a measure of talents. All of them had measure of gifts. Now, the one with five, he did what he was supposed to do. He had five. He didn't say, I wonder how much he got. I wonder how much he got. He focused on the talents that he had. Five talents. Five represents grace upon grace. Amen. Just so happens we're talking about five today. We're talking about the gift that you have. That graceful gift. That awesome gift. That loving gift. That blessed gift. We're blessed to be a blessing. So how about you use that talent that you have? How about you use that talent and share what you have? God is asking you, why not you, daughter? Why not you, son? Is my word too hard for you? When God um, brought that to my attention, I said, God, why don't people want to serve you wholeheartedly? He said, ask them. Is it too hard for you to serve me? Is it too difficult to, to serve me? Is it too inconvenient to serve me? I want you to let that marinate in your spirit. Why don't we want to serve God wholeheartedly? Why don't we want to do what thus saith the Lord? Why don't we want to pick up this word and apply it to our life? Why is it that we don't want to serve God wholeheartedly? He gave his all. When, he said, when it says God gave his only begotten son, that was his all. He didn't have to do it. And you know, the old people used to sing back uh, when I was a kid, uh, he didn't have to do it, but he did. 
God doesn't force himself on anybody, but he just wants to know, what is it about him that you don't want to serve him wholeheartedly? What is it about him that you don't think he's worthy to be praised? What is it about him that you don't feel like it's uh, important to go forth with power and demonstration, with the gifts that he's given you? What is it about him that you don't want to come to him each and every day and thank him and serve him and be about your father's business? What is it? Is he asking too much? Is it just too hard? Is the world just too much fun that you just want to serve man and not him? What is it? What is it about God that you don't want to serve him? That's something we need to think about each and, t each and every day that we wake up. What is it about God that makes me want to get up and praise him? Or do we even acknowledge who God is in our lives? Does the people that you work with even know that you're a God's child? Or do they just think you're part of the game? When you come in the room, does the light shine or does it get darker? When you come in the room, does the conversations change? Do they acknowledge that you're a child of God and that they just need to clean up their language? Do they need to clean up their mouth? Or are you part of the gang? You part of the secret jokes? Or are you part of what's going on in social media when everything is uh, negative? Are you that person that comes in and brighten up the room and say, hey, God is still able. Hey, what you need prayer for? When you're at the grocery store and somebody needs an extra dollar on the grocery bill, are you that person? What is it about you that stands out? What is it about you that's different? What is the talent that you have? And what I like about uh, the parable of the talents is God acknowledged everybody has their own talent. You all have your measure of gifts. What is it that you're doing? We were talking about last week how uh, Sister Justine has that talent. She got that gift of singing. She can, she can tear down uh, walls with that singing. What is it that you have that can tear down a wall so you can get a breakthrough? What is it that you have? But you got to know. Some of you can grab hold of that sword. And when you grab hold of it, you can break some stuff up. You can mess some people up with the word, meaning that you can deliver and set them free, and they don't even know what happened to them. They don't even know why they're acting right, because you know how to get your sword, and you know how to go for it. You know how to use it in a mighty way. So whatever your gift is, use it. Don't hide it. Don't set it aside. Don't say, woe is me. I don't feel like it, God. Today, I don't know what's going on. I don't feel like serving you. That's what the, time, the one servant did that had the one talent. He just got fearful and just hid it. For whatever reason, it says that he just thought maybe he needed to hide it and put it away. Well, God's not pleased with you. He'll say, servant, I knew you not. Child of God, I knew you not. Because you didn't do what it was I asked you to do here on this earth. Did you go see the sick? Did you go lay hand on them? Did you go see about the poor? Did you bless them with something? When you've got that gift and talent, God is encouraging you through the word of God to go forth with this talent and bless somebody else. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Not because it's not there for you, but because we don't pick it up and run with it. But rather you reject the information that you've already been given. This information that you receive each and every day that you pick up your word, if you pick up your word, it's there. My people don't have to be destroyed by the lack of knowledge. God is saying, whatever it is you need, I've got it right here for you. And some people think, because this word is thick, it's intimidating. Don't let the word intimidate you. Read one chapter a day. Then the next day, read two chapters a day. Then you may have to go back to the first chapter you read the first day. Get a chapter in your spirit and let it marinate in you. I keep saying marinate because God wants you to get this down in the inside. So once it's down in there, nothing can sway you. Nothing can encourage you. Nothing can persuade you to go another way. But you'll continuously go the way God has called you to go. You won't be uh, persuaded to do what man says is good. You'll be persuaded to do what God said is good. Why? Because you've got it down on the inside. Because God's word is down on the inside of you. And nothing can separate you from the word of God. Which is an awesome thing because if nothing can separate you from the word of God, you'll go for it. Yeah, you'll get a bump here and a punch here and a bang there, but you'll go forth because you're encouraged, because the word of God is true, and because it's down on the inside of you. And when the word of God is on the inside of you, you're going to want to share it. You want to encourage each other. Now, if we can't even encourage ourselves, how are we going to go outside these doors and out of these four walls and encourage someone else? My people perish from a lack of knowledge. Amen, amen, amen. I want you to go down to 21 in uh, Matthew 25. I want you to go to 21. 
And after the, uh, uh, the uh, servants that had all these talents, five, two, and one talents, in 21 it says, His Lord said unto him, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. God is so joyous when we do what thus saith the Lord. You got that one talent, work it out. Use that one talent that you have. You got two talents, work it out. You got five talents, work it out. Whatever that talent is, focus on your talent. I don't have time to focus on pastor's talent. I don't have time to focus on your talent because I got talents I got to do work with. I got to work on this talent that I have. I always tell everybody, when I was in school, I got in trouble all the time for running my big mouth. Teacher would say, Wendy's an A student, but I had to give her a five. Five was the worst you could get. One was great, two was okay, three was okay, four was okay, five was the worst. So I got A fives in school, which would keep you off the honor roll because a five is terrible. So I always got an A5 in some classes because I knew that teacher wasn't going to be too strict, so I ran my mouth in her class. Not good. Not good. Because the talent that I had, I was misusing it and I was abusing it. So when you get a talent, don't misuse and abuse your talent. How, how can I say that? Because there are many prophets out there. There are many prophets with gifts and talents. However, they misuse and abuse that talent. How are they doing that? Astrology. Astrology. God has blessed him with this gift to tell you what thus saith the Lord. However, now you want to go do it the devil's way and you want to give them astrological, this astrological thing that you think you've been given when really it's a gift from God, but you perverted it now. When you have this awesome gift that God has given you, the devil is right there waiting, trying to pervert it, trying to pervert it. Don't let the devil pervert the gift that God has given you. Don't let the devil pervert the gift and talents that God has blessed you with. Don't let him do it. How do you know he's perverting you with it? Because it's your flesh. Your flesh is taking over. When you say, hey, it was all me. Hey, I did it. Hey, it was me. Hey, recognize me. Hey, give me money. Hey, I want you to pay me for this gift and talent that I have. That's how you know you perverted it. That's how you know that it's not God anymore. It's all flesh. Flesh feels good, I, I must admit. I was a teenager once. Flesh feels good. But when it's burning, it does not feel good. You ever burnt the tip of your finger when you're doing something? Or you ever burnt um, your hair when you're curling it back in the day? Burning does not feel good. Why am I saying that? Because that's the devil's job, is to convince you that all this fleshly good feeling is good. And in the very end, there's nothing but burning that's going to take place. Nothing that but burning is going to take place. So when your gift and talent is perverted, he's so excited. The devil is so excited. Why? Because he knows he's got a new friend coming on in. And then he won't be your friend long because he's going to desert you and he's going to let you go. A, a lady came to me. Um, if y'all were here on uh, Resurrection Sunday, we had uh, the baptism for the, uh, oh, the uh, children. We were uh, dedicating the babies. Uh, we don't call it dedication. Chris, yeah, dedication. We were dedicating the babies. And they were twins. And uh, she came to me uh, a couple days ago and asked me to go visit her daughter in the hospital. Um, her daughter is on drugs and um, she wanted us to go lay hands on her and pray with her again. Her daughter came um, to the baby dedication that day and the grandma has uh, custody of the grandkids. So pastor and I had already decided we were going to go visit her and the very next day the mother came to me and she said, don't go to the hospital. She checked herself out. The hospital said she needed to stay for several days and she checked herself out of the hospital and we went up there and she was already gone. Listen, when the devil wants to kill, steal, and destroy, he don't care who you, is, who you are. It doesn't, he doesn't care what it is that's causing you to get deeper, deeper, deeper into death. Deeper, deeper, deeper into poverty. Deeper, deeper, deeper into sickness. He doesn't care what it is he does to get you closer to him. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. All he wants is you. All he wants is that body to fail. We have to understand he is not playing. His time is getting short. Don't allow him to confuse you and to destroy you. Know that God is in control of it all, but you have to surrender. Don't let anybody convince you, yeah, you know, you can serve God sometimes. Or there's, God is a um, forgiving God. God is a loving God. He won't allow anything to happen to you. It clearly states that in 21 he says, enter thou into the joy of the Lord. This is just a parable of what God is saying. If you don't do this thing right here on earth, 
you won't get to enter in. There is no in-between. There is no in-between. You're either going heaven or you're either going to hell. There is no in-between. If you are a lukewarm Christian, you're not making it. You're not making it. Don't let anybody convince you once saved, always saved. You got to do this thing right. That's why in this word, he breaks it down as easy as, as, easy as you can read it. It's there. Uh, Pastor always talks about my King James, King James Version because he has all these Bibles at home that break it all down. Well, look, whatever version you read and all you're getting, get an understanding. Understand that this word is for you so you will prosper that you will prosper in your spirit, that you will prosper in health, that you will prosper in your daily walk with God. And I want to go over to 29 in Matthew 25 and 29. For unto everyone that hath shall be given, he shall have abundance. Say abundance. abundance. God's word is all about abundance. God's word is all about succeeding. God's word is all about blessings. Don't let anybody convince you that it's just something that happens. No. It's not just something that just happens. It's something that God has promised you. It's something that God desires to give you. But you got to want this thing. You got to want it in your spirit. You got to want it more than anything else. When you wake up each and every day, this is something you have to already set in your mind and your spirit that this is what I want from God. The God that I serve is so true and so just that I can't have anybody else trying to convince me of otherwise. Nothing you can say can separate me from the word of God and the love of God. Because this word has brought me 33 years in marriage, raising two children, getting through all types of um, different job situations where it wasn't always great. God has showed himself real to me so many times that who wouldn't serve a God like that? And you got your own testimony. So I don't have to convince you how great he is. But I do have to convince you how the gift and talent that you have, you need to work with it. You need to make it work right. You need to share it. You need to get out there and draw the people in from the north, south, east, and the west. Why? Because people are perishing every day. My people perish from a lack of knowledge. Why? Because you just don't want to take hold of it. It's there. It's there. We talk about getting education. It's great to get a degree. But once you get that degree, what do you want? You want a job. Because Sally May going to start calling you up. Sally May going to start sending you some bills. So you want what you uh, worked hard at to work for you now. Same with the word of God. You read this word of God. God has blessed you with this gift. Now you got a job to do. But guess what? God's not going to force you to do nothing you don't want to do. The only thing between man and God is he's a loving God. Man don't forgive you. You owe somebody something, they're going to keep looking for you. If, so you. if you owe man something, they're going to keep calling you up on the phone. God won't do it. He'll give you the opportunity to do what thus saith the Lord, but he's not going to force himself on you. He said, use that gift. Use that talent that I blessed you with, daughter and son. Amen. We're almost finished. We're at Matthew um, 25 and 34 now. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit. Everybody say inherit. Amen. Inherit the kingdom. Prepare for you from the foundation of the world. And down to 35 it says, For I was hungered, and ye gave me meat. And I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. And I was stranger, and ye took me in. And 36, Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick. And you visited me, and I was in prison, and you came unto me. In 37, then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? And in 38 it says, when saw we thee a stranger and took thee in for naked and clothed thee. In 39, or when he saw we thee sick or in prison, and came unto thee. And forty, and the, king, and the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. When you have blessed somebody else, you have blessed God. When you have used that gift and that talent, you have blessed God. When you went and seen about your brother and your sister, you have blessed God. You've got to understand how much of a job that is, needs to be done outside these four walls. We got to be about our father's business. People are perishing every day. 
And if we just touch the hem of his garment, you will know that healing will take place. We know that deliverance will take place. We know that peace will be in your home. We know that peace will be in your jobs. But we got to know how to touch the hem of his garment, mother. Just touch it. Just touch it. Do we want it from him? Is the world much more fun? Do we just want to serve man and not God? Because it looks like so much fun. I have to admit, when you look at TV sometimes and you, you see everything that's going on TV, it may look enticing, but my flesh doesn't get to win. My flesh has to submit. My flesh has to be delivered and set free. My flesh has to submit unto what I say God has told me to do. My flesh does not get to win. Say, my flesh won't win. Are you ever going to be just sold out to Christ? Somebody uh, made a song that says, I'm sold out to Jesus. And when I heard that song for the very first time, it was years ago, I said, man, people are always talking about, you're a sellout, you're a sellout. Well, how many of us want to be sold out to Jesus? How many of us want to be sold out and let God have his way in our lives? Be sold out. Why? Because when you're sold out, you get to receive the blessings. When you're sold out, you get to receive what God has for you. Be sold out. And when things look like it's not going to come together in every situation of your life, it's all right. Walk in it. Walk in what? Walk in the word of God. Walk in your blessing. Walk in your healing. It may not look like it's going to take place. It may not look like God has heard your prayer. But look, be sold out. Why? Because God is in control of it all. When you're sold out, God can speak to you and you can hear him. When you're sold out, you know the Father's voice. When you're sold out, you'll submit to him. When you're sold out, you'll understand that God is the one that's going to deliver and set free family members, friends, co-workers. Be sold out. Then you don't have to go to bed and rise up every morning worrying what's going to happen. When you're sold out, you know that God has the control of it all. When my kids were getting older as they were growing up, I said, you know what? Mama can't be everywhere, but God is everywhere. So I was able to go to sleep at night without worrying what was going on with my kids' life. I was able to go to sleep and be at peace because I was sold out. I'm still sold out. And when you get sold out, even in your younger years, we got young kids here today. In your younger years, when you, when you don't let people convince you that what's going on in the streets is what's, what's happening, what's the best thing going on. When you're sold out to God, you say, hey, mm -mm, I don't have to go down that, that road to know that it's the wrong thing to do. So, you know, some people say you are, sometimes you got experience for yourself. Listen, wisdom says that if somebody has told you if you go across the street, you're going to fall in a ditch and break your ankle. You don't need to walk in that ditch and go across the street. Because wisdom has already explained to you what's going on across the street. Save that ankle. Save that doctor bill. Use wisdom. Understand that when people are trying to help you, they love you. Understand that when things have come up against you, that God has placed people in your life to help you. So you don't have to bump your head. So that you don't have to go across the street, fall in the ditch, and break your ankle. That's why God places people in your life. That's why God places you in a ministry. If God has called you to go into a certain ministry and sit and be taught, sit and be taught. God won't lead you wrong. Do you hear his voice? And then the other thing is, do we know the Father's voice? Sometimes I wonder because when people do contrary to the word of God, and then they say it was God, did you hear him? Was that God's voice that you heard? Because God won't lead you astray. Are you hearing the Father's voice on today? Know that God wants you to use these gifts and talents to be a blessing to other folks so they don't go astray. And if you know anybody in your family, they've gone astray. What I can convince you to do is continue to pray. I don't want you to shed another tear for them. I don't want you to call them and beg them again. If you're going to call them, just pray with them. Don't beat them down. Don't beat them over the head with this Bible. Don't beat them over the head with this word. You bring forth the word of God and watch and see that the, the chains fall off. This is the only way you're going to do it. Yelling, crying, screaming, and fussing and cussing at them is not going to do it. you got to fight it with the word of God. you got to get this sword, and you got to get the swing in it. This word is what is going to get us through everybody. This word is what is going to help us through. 
We got to be about our father's business. If God didn't want us to be about his, his business, he would have shut the, shut the doors and, and closed down the earth already. But there's something he's still doing here on this earth. And we are the people. We are the people that need to be about our father's business. Because I got some talents. I got some talents. And I need my talents to go forth. I need my talents to deliver and set people free. When I got a talent that's able to deliver and set people free from the word of God through the Holy Spirit that's working within me, he said he wasn't going to leave us comfortless. So why is it so many times people sit there and look like uh, they just sucked on a lemon, but you're a child of God? I tell you why, because you've convinced, the, you let the enemy convince you that his life is not worth living. You let the enemy convince you that you don't need to get up on Sunday and go nowhere. You let the enemy convince you that people don't love you. You let the enemy convince you that family members don't love you. Don't let the enemy talk in your ear gate. And when he does that, this is what you need to do. You need to say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That means lack. I, th there's no lack. The 23rd Psalms, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. God gave this word to you for a reason. Everything that's written in red, that was Jesus talking. He wants you to acknowledge him. Acknowledge this word. Place it down on in your spirit so when you go out, you can be prosperous and victorious. Why? Because you're the king's kid. Why? Because somebody needs you. Why did he give you these gifts and talents so you can sit down with them? No. So you can go forth with power and demonstration. So you can be encouraging to someone else. You should already be encouraged. You should already want to go forth with power and demonstration just because God is blessing you. Why not be a blessing to somebody else? Why not want to go forth and tell somebody, hey, I was in that same situation, but let me tell you what my God did. Let me explain to you what God is able to do for you. Your gift and talent might be your mouth. Mine was my mouth. When I learned that I was going to continuously get in trouble at school, I learned how to shut this mouth. And then when it was time to use this gift and talent, when I got older, I understood what it was all about. Because, see, you get your gifts and talents at a young age, and then it constantly grows. And because somebody is nurturing it. My nurturer was God, but my earthly nurturer was my grandma. What would we do without grandmas? My grandma was the one that took me to church. My grandma was the one that poured into me. And after she left this earth, grandma was still within me. Everything that she talked about, the knowledge and wisdom that she had, she poured it into me. So by the time I got married and I had children and grandchildren and I interacted with ministry now, the love of God is there because grandma has so much love. People got on her last nerve, I know, but she has so much love. She has so much love for the people. We got to have love today. If you don't have love and forgiveness in your heart, I'm coming to you today and pleading with you to let the enemy leave you today. Cause him to leave you. How? Because the word of God is going to be stirring up in you and he won't even have room to come in. He won't even want to stay in that vessel. He won't even want to continue to interact with you because he's sick of you praising God. He's sick of you magnifying God. He's sick of you showing love to people. And showing love to God. He said, I can't stay in here. It's no fun in here. When you entertain the devil, he'll stay right there with you. When you entertain what it is he's doing, he'll stay right there with you. He'll continuously talk in your ear. And you know, I, I know about things talking in your ear because I'm a prophet. And at a young age, the enemy would say, oh, no, you don't need to do that. Oh, no. And I would say, oh, no. That would be wrong. That, that's wrong. No, you need to go here. This is what you really should do. And then when I was a kid, I realized there's two voices talking to me. I know about the two voices. This, this is nothing new. But I didn't entertain the devil because I was smart enough as a kid to know the devil is going to tell me to do the wrong thing and God is going to tell me to do the right thing. And if neither one is talking, I had to use the godly wisdom that was inside of me as a young child. And how did I get the godly wisdom? I just opened up the word of God. I didn't really know many scriptures growing up, but I knew how to read. I knew I, knew I was blessed to be able to read. Love to read. So it's not by happen chance I became an author. I love to read. So when I got older, the gift just began to grow. The gift, and God knew who to place in my life. He said, 
William Campbell, you got to go over there and tell Wendy, Cam Wendy Shade, she's going to be your wife because I got work for y'all to do in 2018. There's some things I need you to do. God knew what he was doing. I didn't know, but I knew what was right and what was wrong. And I chose to go down the street that was right. Did I always choose the right road to go down? No, I did not. Did I pay the price? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. So listen, when you do the wrong thing, repent. Go for it. Ask God for forgiveness. If you've never asked God to come into your life, this is the day. This is the day. Call on God. Call on God. He's just there waiting. He's forever waiting for us to call on him. He's got many blessings, but do we want them? I'm telling you today, there's so many blessings that God has for his people. And God said, but they won't ask. He said they won't ask. Why? Because they don't feel like they're worthy. They don't feel like that I'm going to give it to them. God is saying, if you just ask, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things. He's not nervous about what you need. He's not nervous about what you ask him. You walking down that path that's the straight and narrow, neither looking to the right nor the left. God said, so watch and see that I don't hasten to perform it on your behalf. Amen. Please stand with me on the day. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you and I praise you for our gifts and our talents that you've blessed us with on today. Lord God, I thank you, Lord God, for each and every person under the sound of my voice, Lord God, that blessed and highly favored, Lord God. I thank you and I praise you for meeting every need, Lord God, healing each and every body, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for setting the captive free on today. Lord, I thank you as we go forth, Lord, that your word would be stirred up on the inside, Lord God, and it would just flow up out of us like rivers of living water coming up out of us, Lord, that we would, would continuously want to bless us others, Lord God. Lord, even though man says there's doom across the land, Lord, we know that you're in control of it all. We know that you are in control of what goes on at the White House. We know that you're in control of what goes on in South Carolina. We know that you're in control of what goes on in Ohio and in New York and California, Lord God, and in Idaho and in Washington State, Lord God. We just thank you, Lord God, that you're in control of each and every city, country, state, Lord God. And we just bless your holy name for being Lord God Almighty or by yourself, Lord Jesus. This day and forevermore, Lord God, as we go into communion today, Lord God, we just thank you, Lord God, in advance for what you're doing in our lives, Lord. You didn't have to do it, Lord God, but we thank you because you did, because you're a mighty, loving, and forgiving God. This day and forevermore, we'll praise you and we'll thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. 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 And at this time, we're going to begin to go into uh, communion today.